all narcissists are not sociopaths. I believe from what I've read, all sociopaths are narcissists or are fall within the narcissistic spectrum. They have narcissistic traits and most likely also have NPD. A narcissist driving force is self-interest. It's self-protection of the ego and it is self-interested and the lack of empathy means that everything is related to and, and directed to that by that self-interest uh, focus. So a sociopath is actually a person who gets off on the bullying, the control, the manipulation, and the damage that they cause. So a narcissist may not be aware in the sense of they're aware, maybe like because people have told them, but the lack of empathy means they don't have the, um, the feeling associated with understanding what they're doing is hurting someone else. And while they may be aware of it and callous and cold to it, they aren't actually getting deriving pleasure off of it. They're just basically, I get my way or I don't get my way. I want my way. I'm a narcissist. I must have my way, right? It's everything is directed their way. A sociopathic person is, uh, they actually enjoy the punishing. They enjoy, they have a sadistic quality to them that enjoys all of that. So people with sociopathy often have been diagnosed as well as antisocial personality disorder. The distinguishing features are there's a deceitfulness, a callousness, risk-taking behavior, um, obviously the lack of empathy, there's an impulsiveness. They are incapable of true intimacy. They may seek out your intimacy to come towards them, but they are incapable of reciprocating intimacy. If you've ever been with one, you know what that's like. They lack a real um, awareness of others, yet they understand that it hurts others, if that makes sense. Because of the lack of empathy, the awareness is different. Um, it can appear, they can appear likable and hiding the truth. A narcissist, straight up NPD, while a covert narcissist may have some of that hiding the truth to them, um, it's extreme with the sociopath. So basically, it's a more extreme behavior than we're used than we we always talk about. It's a combination of traits, right? You're not going to have one trait and say, "Oh, well, they are deceitful, so therefore they're a sociopath." You know, a lot of narcissists are too. So um, the difference is the main difference is, is that the sociopath actually enjoys they enjoy treating other, they enjoy what they're inflicting. A sociopath has antisocial uh, behaviors and attitudes and violate social norms. They are the massive boundary pushers. They don't even acknowledge boundaries. And, and there's recklessness and aggressiveness with sociopaths often. Okay, both the narcissist and the sociopathic person will could potentially be uh, there to charm to charm uh, in order to engage you, all right? Uh, they both tend to have a sense of grandiosity. They both tend to take credit for things in a boastful or even like passive aggressive boastful sort of way and then point fingers when there's somewhere to blame because they don't take accountability. So the lack of accountability is present in both. Uh, they're both very self-serving. They both lack empathy. And like I said, the narcissist, uh, people always ask, does the narcissist know they're doing this? Because it, sometimes it seems like they kind of know, but then it's almost like they don't even know. They're just, they're just doing what seems normal, right? Right. They're just doing what's right to them, which is serving their own delusion, right? Um, but the sociopath absolutely knows. They know that what they're doing, they're calculating. They lack true self-awareness on an emotional level. In other words, they can't take accountability for what they do. They can't even really see that what they're doing, maybe the sociopath knows how it affects people, but they don't see it in the same way someone would who has self-awareness to the point where they want to make change in their life. The malignant narcissist has narcissistic personality, if it's a true diagnosis, narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, or sociopathy as a, as a diagnosis, and sadism and aggression. Um, so I, I think all of the, that my understanding is all, all of these intertwine, it's all on a spectrum. 
However, a, a narcissist that is strictly NPD, say on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, still can be completely toxic and damaging in a relationship because of the self, self-serving delusional behavior and beliefs and way of relating the lack of empathy and the lack of accountability. I mean, you just can't relate with that, right? But there's a whole nother level when you're talking sociopathy. It's important to understand how a sociopath looks only so you can avoid it. If you're with someone who's toxic and they have toxic behavior and they are gaslighting you and devaluing you within your relationship, then there is something wrong to begin with. And that's all you really need. (laughs) If you're talking to a narcissist, straight up NPD, most of the time, not all the time, most, and again, this is why it's so hard to talk about because we know that it's not just this list. Like you go and look up the diagnostic criteria and you're like, well, that's nothing. How could it only be 15 things or however many are on there? No, it's a huge, we have volumes and volumes of videos every day, a different topic about narcissism. How can it just be those few things? It's not, it's a way bigger picture than what's painted in the diagnostics. So mostly because of how it affects you. So in general, talking to a narcissist, their talk will be of themselves. They will redirect things back to self. They will self-focus and self-direct. Sociopath will want to talk about you. They will groom you by wanting to talk about you. A narcissist will groom you most of the time by luring you into their world. Sociopath will want to infiltrate your world. They will want to know everything about you. They will focus it towards you because they're grooming you and they're they're um, putting their feelers out for any vulnerabilities and weaknesses they can later use against you. And yes, narc- you know what we call narcissists also can do that as well. It's but that is the it is more common with sociopathy. It is less common for them to be self-talking. So that's not to say a narcissist can't also groom you that way. A lot of people don't see sociopathy right at first. A lot of people don't see the sociopath because they are really good at hiding it. Um, my feeling on covert narcissism is that they, my feeling, okay, I'm not a scientist. This is just from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've actually witnessed. My feeling is on, is that they, the covert narcissist seems to tend more towards these behaviors. And maybe we're just calling it two different things when it's one. I don't know. The lack of risky behavior is the one thing that I personally didn't see with a malignant narcissist. The malignant narcissist that I know he's a malignant narcissist. The point was I didn't see a whole lot of risky behavior until I looked at subtle things. And then I realized there was a ton. It just wasn't risky like um, breaking laws. It was breaking moral codes or social laws within a family or law or rules within a community or not wanting to follow and, and like thinking they're above the law. Basically, it's like thinking you're above the law. Sure, I'll follow the law because I have to, because I don't want to get arrested, but I'm above it. So if there's any chance to not, then they wouldn't. So this is the thing that tipped me over to thinking that what I was dealing with was a malignant narcissist or potentially a sociopath. But what he said was when he meets people for the first time, in particular women, he paints a picture that he knows will suit the situation so that he can create the relationship he wants based on what he is teaching that person to believe about him. He said he puts it on like a lens and that that person will see him through that lens always because the first impression that you have and the very few first few weeks of impressions that you have are the ones that stick. Okay, so he knew exactly what he was doing. He was cunning and calculating about it and he created situations where what he wanted was to be seen as what was best for the situation that he, for the outcome he was trying to create. He does it with work. He does it with friends. He does it with family. And he does it when he, when he searches for supply. So that is a sociopathic behavior. Uh, sociopaths tend to like high stimulus situations. They like to, you know, again, the, the thrill seeking, where the narcissist may or may not. Malignant narcissists. So we know the NPD, I'm just going to read quickly. NPD traits or NPD diagnostic primary traits, delusions of grandeur, no empathy, belief in their own superiority, take advantage of others for gain, 
envy. The need for attention is high, recognition and admiration as well. Um, intense sense of self-importance, entitlement and arrogant behavior. Those are the major diagnostic um, trait. Antisocial personality disorder, the major traits, we went over them with sociopathy, but we'll do it again. Um, they have a disdain for authority. There's a pattern of deceit, reckless impulsive behavior, no remorse, general hostility, aggressive, aggression, irritability, and agitation. Uh, they're irresponsible, arrogant, disrespectful behavior. Aggression, obviously, injuring, damaging property, or emotional aggression. It doesn't have to be physical aggression. I would throw in there ex extent, extreme passive aggressive as well. Sadism, enjoys hurting others, enjoys watching others have pain. Uh, sexual arousal from seeing pain or from, from inflicting pain. Uh, they fantasize about hurting others even if they don't do so. Um, a sadist will uh, want to hurt uh, when irritable or angry. They enjoy humiliating. They have aggression towards others sometimes. Um, they don't always have aggression. Sometimes they just play it out in their heads, but they enjoy it. They behave in controlling, domineering, and um, uh, dominant sort of ways. So yeah, that's the malignant narcissist right there. Oh, yeah. Then the malignant narc freaks out when you see behind the curtain. Oh my gosh, do they freak out, right? Uh-huh. He, he used to tell me he liked causing pain. He got off on pain. He got off on hurting people, not so much pain physically. I think he liked pushing things to the point of pain and then seeing how far he could poke at it. Um, but then he would say it like, is that bad? You know, like, oh, like all cutesy. Is that wrong? Oh, yeah, it kind of is. I don't know what it really is. Not kind of. Hey, you have a good tomorrow and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>